Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the Best Damn EDC, and it's time for another EDC Weekly. A couple weeks back, I asked you guys for your patina carries that can mean anything from well-worn, just beat-up gear, stuff that's just seen a lot of use, and things that are just patinaed and aged really well. So that really could mean a lot of different things, and I tried to showcase a few different meanings for that word patina in this video. So it's not all just aged leather and copper and brass that's you know seen some wear. It's a little bit of different stuff, so you'll see what I mean in a minute. But with that said, this is the EDC Weekly Heavy Patina, and let's do the damn thing. Anyway, the first submission this week comes from David Nassal or Multifunction Doctor over on Instagram and I believe in the Discord as well. Uh, but this carry is just really awesome for a couple of reasons. It's compact, it's titanium leather, got some green splashes in there, uh, but there's a lot of my own personal gear, which I really like to see. And uh, that stuff has seen some serious wear and tear, which I, I love. So first up in the photo on the left is a Spyderco Techno 2 that has a Rips Garage Tech milled titanium clip on it. He also has a Notorious EDC beer bomb in titanium and attached to that is a Zero Feud Zirconium Brick Man bead. He also has a Tactile Turn Zero Feud Best Damn EDC bolt action slim with the top of clip. And next to that is the Redeemed Creations Carry Commission slim wallet. And then finally underneath the gear on the left is a Mighty Hanks Mighty Mini in olive herringbone. David says, once I got the slim wallet, I couldn't keep it on in my pocket for the longest time with how minimally functional it was. I really enjoy carrying with me the Tactile Turn Best MEDC pin with me, not only because of how great it is to fidget with, but it's an awesome way to show support to small businesses that have high quality products made by high quality people with high quality service. Thank you to everyone who had a hand in putting your heart and soul into these amazing products and in my hand. And thank you, Taylor, for being awesome. Cheers. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for the support. You've obviously, you know, followed these drops. You got the pen, you got the wallet. That's that's really, really cool to see. But look at the wear on that wallet. That's just gnarly. That looks really, really cool. I have one and I haven't carried it in a while because I just have so many wallets. I'm always rotating, but uh, this one looks much more gnarly than mine. Mine looks pretty worn. This is really, really cool. And I love that little pull up around where that stitch is, but that shows that you've really put some serious use into this thing. So I love, I love to see that. So thank you for sharing this. This is just really, really cool to see. Anyway, second up, we have a submission from Dale Galaza, I believe, or hand wound and hacked over on Instagram. And this one isn't one that's just like super gnarly wear and tear or you know, really cool patina. It's something that's a little different. It's the micarta patina that really jumped out at me in this one, uh, which uh, I'll explain in a minute. First in this photo in the bottom left is a case copperhead in antique bone. He also has a Raylite land in stonewashed finish. He has a Fisher Space pin bullet in brass. And then the knife that you see in the top right is the Giant Mouse Ace Grand in green micarta. He has two unbranded titanium beads on that. And then in the center of the photo is a DIY leather caddy. One, uh, that leather caddy just being a DIY project is really nice quality. So congrats there. That's actually really, really nice just for you know throwing something together. But also the the Fisher Space pin, it's really common to see a, a very antiqued brass Fisher Space pin. Everybody knows brass patinas beautifully, but micarta is something a little bit different. So when you get micarta, a lot of the time new, like these OD micartas or natural or whatever, will kind of have this chalky, milky appearance to them. And as you carry them and use them, they will darken. And that is what I really love so much about micarta. It just gets so much character. And a lot of it just darkens like this, but just to explain a little further what I mean, I was cutting meat with this knife last week and I had just juice from the meat kind of staining the micarta. It's gone now, but that was just, you know, it's kind of cool. I did wipe it away because it's a little gross, but you know, things like that can stay in the micarta for a long, long time. And that's one of the reasons I really love it, but you can oil micarta, but it will still dry out. The only way to really get something to look like this and stay like that is to use it and carry it and continue to just use it all the time. That's why I like it. It's something that you kind of have to earn with micarta. Anyway, Dale says, the Ace Grand is probably my most used and carried knife. 
the originally light powdery micarta has really darkened over time and there is already a hint of blue on it because of the color transfer from my jeans. I made the EDC caddy out of a locally sourced vegetable tan leather and it has already conformed with the shape of the tools that I put in it. And also it patinas really well. Love your show, keep pumping them awesome videos out. Cheers from Manila, Philippines. It's just really cool, all of this stuff, uh, but I especially love seeing the Ace Grand patinaed. I had one and I never ended up carrying the Ace Grand as much as I liked it. And it just looks way better with use, like it just does. I think most things do, but this one especially. So. Thank you for sharing. This is really, really cool to see. But before we go any further, I wanna thank our sponsor for this video, Blade HQ. As I'm sure many of you know, Blade HQ is an online knife retailer that offers thousands and thousands of different knives from some of the biggest companies like Benchmade and Spyderco to even smaller brands like my buddy Tom at Notorious EDC and Pena Knives. I've made many great friends at Blade HQ over the years and, and deep down, they're also hardcore knife nuts like you and me. And they're also part of this really big, rapidly growing, awesome community. And Blade HQ is always doing something new, like adding new makers, supporting custom knife makers, or running exclusives like this one right here. This is one of my recent favorites. This is the Enrique Pena X-Series Trapper in black micarta with a black blade, M4 steel, really cool stuff. One of the coolest exclusives I've seen Blade HQ do is actually one I have right here. It's not out yet. I don't even know if they've announced it. This is the Ultim Protec SBR. It's S35VN, it's got a black blade. These are really, really cool. They are not out yet. They will be dropping very soon. And if you wanna know more about that drop, just follow Blade HQ over on Instagram. But no matter what you like to carry, Blade HQ has definitely got something for you. They carry so many cool and unique things. So if you wanna see everything they have to offer, hit the link in the description down below. And if you do, you'll be supporting the show here, which I cannot thank you enough for. But also, once again, I wanna thank Blade HQ for sponsoring this video. So the next submission comes from Josh Ruedas or edc.jar over on Instagram. And this one, again, a little bit different. Uh, I chose this one because you see wear in this in many, many different ways. It's not your typical just aged brass. It's stuff that's just seen some actual pocket time, lots of pocket time, actually. So in this photo, just based on what he listed out, there's a Keychron K6. I'm not 100% sure what that is, but there's also a Logitech Master 2. Also not sure what that is, but then there is, wait. Oh, 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 oh. Keychron K6 is the keyboard at the top. The Logitech MX Master 2 is to the right of that. Okay, I got it. And then in the bottom, the actual EDC gear is a Nitize s -Beaner. On that, you can find a Keysmart Flex, an Ole i12R EOS, and it looks like a cigar punch in there, the little pill looking thing. I believe that's a cigar punch. He also has a Zebra F-701, a Leatherman Skeletal next to that, and then below that is a Ridge Wallet and aluminum gunmetal, which has definitely seen some wear. He has a Lumen Top EDC AA flashlight, and then some O'Keefe's lip repair. And then finally to the far right of the photo is a Seiko SNK 809K1 on an aftermarket bracelet. Josh says, I'm looking for a multi-tool with a better pocket clip or just a tool with a pocket clip on the opposite side. When I put the skeletal in my pocket, it sometimes turns and flips because of how the pocket clip is oriented. Yes, I know I've lost two of them that way. One I found later in my uh, yard all rusted up. It does, it turns sideways in your pocket and it just falls out. I'm gonna recommend this because it goes really well. It works really well in both pockets, but it's small enough to put basically where you want. This is the SOG PowerPoint, if you can find one. Sorry, not sorry, uh, they've been out of stock basically since I did the Best Bass Pro video, but they do come back every so often, highly, highly recommend. I'm also looking for a flashlight that has more output, but also has a low mode with very minimal output. I would also like the flashlight to fill up the hand, but not be too big to where I can fit it in my back pocket. A tail switch is preferred, but not necessary. Easy peasy, no question about it, you're gonna look for a Lumen Top, not a Lumen Top, a Raylite Pineapple or a Raylite LAN. Both of those are gonna be about double A sized and really, really fantastic. I prefer the land to the pineapple, but they're both very good. This isn't exactly patina, but my gear has seen some good wear and tear and has seen some good use as well. With that being said, the piece of gear I use the most is the lip balm. I'm outside most of the time for my job and the wind is constantly chapping up my lips. Other than that, I use the Skeletool and Flashlight about the same amount. I used to carry a Benchmade Griptilian, but I found myself always needing the pliers or screwdriver more than a knife. So I switched to the Skeletool and absolutely love it. Hands down, the best adjustment to my EDC I've ever made, except it keeps wanting to flip out of your pocket. So, PowerPoint. Uh, the only thing about the PowerPoint that I'd, I'd say that you may not like is that the main blade on it is just okay. Very small, uh, not the best 
knife. But if you're, you're mainly needing pliers and screwdrivers, this one might be better. The only downside is that uh, the, the, the Phillips on this is pretty good, but the flathead is a very, very tiny flathead. So maybe you're gonna need to go with something a little more robust than this, but this is just the one that I absolutely love to carry. However, I just remembered uh, in the very end of the power pint is a bit driver. So if you have a way to carry just a couple bits, you have a better screwdriver. Anyway, that's exactly what I mean by this. This is really well worn gear. That's stuff that actually gets a lot of use and uh, I'd love to see that. So thank you for sharing Josh. So the next submission comes from Jim Cross or metals underscore etched over on Instagram. He says, so starting off the whiskey is Chattanooga whiskey out of Tennessee. Delicious. I agree. Look at this. Where is it? Look at that. Got some right here. Thank you, Chad and Joe from Big Ed Design for sending me a bottle. Appreciate it. Anyway, in the very left of the photo is a Victorinox Swiss Army knife. He said he got it as a kid, but doesn't mention what model. I'm not exactly sure. I can't tell. It's an odd size, but lots of unique tools there. Next to that, the braided leather. That is a MKOND69 sap. He says he calls it a paperweight. Um, not entirely sure. He also has a silver and wood fountain pen that is propped up on that with a gold nib. He has a Benchmade Adamas with FDE and D2 at the very top of the photo that has definitely seen a lot of use. And in the middle of the photo, there are some silver dice. Those are from Mexico. He also has a Leatherman Mutt in the middle of the photo as the main multi-tool. The tool that you see next to that in the middle of the photo is the metals etched bottle opener. And then beneath that is a beard comb from Brown Bag Beard Company. And then finally to the far right of the photo in the bottom is a Luminex watch series. He says 3000 or 3900 V3. So I'd have to look into that a little more to know exactly what the deal is with the Luminox, but a Luminox watch. Jim says, I appreciate the channel and seriously enjoy the content. So thank you for that. So I have lots of leather slips for some of my gear and as summer is approaching, I'm interested in coming up with something that doesn't suck up sweat while on the job site. I am both a landscaper, chainsaw operator out in California. Any suggestions would be appreciated. The Benchmade Adamas I actually carried for about six months when I first purchased it. After blowing out several pockets and getting a little tired of the weight, I decided to work in some lighter weight knives. Recently, I purchased the Mini Adamas. The size is brilliant and the weight loss is noticeable. I'm not necessarily a fanboy of any one company yet. I find myself having multiple Benchmades as well as Spydercos. Um, that, that Adamas has definitely seen a lot of hard use, which is really cool. I love seeing coated blades with the coating just absolutely thrashed. That's really cool. And the leather and mutt, that thing has seen a good amount of use as well. Love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. So thank you for sharing, Jim. So the next submission comes from Don or Don A or Fat Man's Adventure over on Instagram. Uh, and I chose this photo mainly because of the fixed blade. Um, I love seeing both slip joints and fixed blades with tool steels with actual patina. So first up in this photo is a fixed blade. It comes from Sevedhelm. Uh, it's a Swedish maker in 52100 steel. It's in black micarta with red liners. Definitely seen some good use there. I love the patina on that. He also has a center custom TRI EDC. That's the flashlight you see in the middle, as well as a Fisher Space pin in brass with a clip. He has a handmade leather wallet in the top that is made by his best friend who no longer makes wallets. And then there's an old leather slip in Inside that is a red Victorinox Cadet. And then attached to that is a bead, a brass bead from Sharp Edge Preacher over on Instagram. And then finally in the center underneath everything is a Field Notes notebook, an old one, he says. He said, it's hard to find both nice beads and leather straps for lanyards here in Sweden. And I know you can't help there, but I'd love to get some help with some more brass TI extras. In this picture, you see some of my gear that's gotten the most patina over the years. The fixed blade is my work EDC from Swedish knife maker, Seveds Nivar. Uh, Seven's Knives that he gave to me to test and I've had it uh, with me at work for over six months now. I've tested to a whole lot of stuff in my work. Love the tough steel and it seems to be able to do a good job so far. I love to use it. The flashlight is a very important tool for me. I work in as, as an excavator operator, but it's very often we need to check stuff out where it's dark and not too often. My cores have a, have a flashlight and at home, the kids and me often drop stuff under the sofa or bed. So it comes in handy often. Anyway, he says a lot of other stuff, but we need to move through this. He says, love your vids and it's the biggest inspiration for my YouTube content. Well, glad to help there. And thank you for sharing this. This is really cool. And I really, really like the look of that, that fixed blade. It's just simple. It's got a very nice, simple drop point, flat grind. 
and the, and the patina is just sick. So thank you for sharing. All right, so taking a hard left turn, we have a submission from Matt Calder or Stag Leatherworks over on Instagram and in the Discord. And this one, rather than you know something you've earned, he's worked for this in a different way by forcing this patina. This is the Shipwreck patina. We saw some stuff in the last CDC Weekly sh with Shipwreck patina. Uh, this one, there's a lot of it. So first up in this photo is a Victorinox Tinker in the top left that has some, I guess, copper scales that have been shipwrecked. So it's the ASZ Knife Maker topographic scales in brass that he has uh, shipwrecked. He also has a Wild Dove bead attached to that. There's a Smoother Pro bolt action pin next to that. And the knife in the center of the photo is the QSP Penguin. He has a Rovivon Aurora A7X XP G3 and then at the very bottom is an Uncrate Bic lighter cover in brass. He has a Stag Leatherworks, that's his own work. He has Stag Leatherworks Curvid wallet, Servid, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, in waxy Olmo and turquoise Pueblo leather. And then finally underneath everything is the Pocket Dimension EDC Hank. He says, while I love the Rovivon light, I would like to know of a brass light that I can fairly easily pull all of the guts out of to shipwreck the body. I made an Olight I3T next to useless getting condensation in the bulb housing trying to shipwreck one. Uh, my best guess would probably be a Prometheus flashlight. It's not going to be super, super easy to get everything out, but I do believe they come apart fairly easily. Um, that or a Lumen Top, like an FW3. Uh, or something like that. There's, there's a lot of different lights that you need some special tools or tweezers and stuff to get all the components out, but they come apart. So yeah, I would I would start with Prometheus or a Lumen Top in brass and then go from there. But uh, it's, it's hard to say. I've not taken apart a ton of flashlights, like not super, super like taking them down. He said, this entire carry can be blamed on the Facebook group. Someone shared a picture of shipwreck copper scales on a pocket knife and I fell hard. After a few times getting the hang of shipwrecking brass, I was off shipwrecking everything I could get my hands on. The wallet came about to match the carry as it uses two different pieces of leather when mo most of my models use only a single piece so I could get the brown and blue coloring that I wanted. The wallet I carry tends to rotate pretty often because as a maker I, and my own social media manager, I need to showcase different stuff, but this one has even kept my shell quarter of them wallets at home in the tray for a couple of weeks now. It definitely isn't a lightweight carry, but it isn't a boat anchor in my pockets either. My next steps would be upgrading from the QSP Penguin not that there is anything wrong with the penguin at all. It's a great knife. My next knife is going to be a shipwreck brass scale bug out. That's the number one and only uh, one on my list for right now. Very, very cool. Um, I need to dabble with shipwrecking and just forcing patina. I can remove patina. That's easy enough, but I, I've never tried to force patina a lot. I've done like a brass blackener, but I've not done forced patina. So I need to dabble anyway. Very, very cool. Little, uh, little aside, something that's a little different that you don't always see, but uh, seeing more and more of, but very cool. Thank you for sharing. And the final submission this week. So this one is a little bit modified, but also pretty well worn. It comes from Carlos Garcia or Carlos3124 Garcia over on Instagram. He has a Benchmade 810 Contigo and the Gerber Multi-Tool Unknown Model. Don't know exactly. It's a, it looks like a multiplier, but I'm, I'm not sure. It's definitely a little older and definitely, definitely seen some serious use. He says, first off, this Benchmade 810, which is heavily modified, I reprofiled the blade to make it into a drop point and then took the factory coating off with an acid etch and stone wash. After this, I put holes into the G10 to mimic the Benchmade Adamas. The Gerber is just a solid tool that goes with me everywhere. So not only did you put holes in the G10, unless the liners were already milled uh, or, or had holes in them for, for weight reduction, um, you also drilled through those liners. I'm not sure, they might come with the holes already, but regardless, um, yeah, you've definitely modified this, but you've also used this a good, good bit. Anyway, just wanted to share this one as well as something that's just a little different, but still, well-worn and used and patinaed. So thank you for sharing, Carlos. And anybody who is featured here or over on Instagram, you guys get an additional entry into the giveaway. I will be choosing the winner of that giveaway at the end of this month, and it's gonna encompass several months of entries. But to keep the show going, we need more submissions. So for the next EDC Weekly, we're gonna do, let's say, a color-themed carry. So what that means is not any one color in particular, but it could be a red-themed, green-themed, white, black, whatever just a color themed carry episode. So all sorts of different colors. I'm not picking one color, all colors. So just color coordinated carries. I guess that's the best way to put it. So to submit your carry, just go to edcw.co, submit there and you're good to go. So just 
hit the link in the description as well if you want to do it that way. But thank you guys for submitting. Thank you guys for helping keep this channel and this show alive. I appreciate you. If you saw anything in this video that you want to check out yourself, there's a link in the description down below for everything. Most of those are affiliate links, so I do get a little bit of a kickback. Doesn't cost you anything extra, so just click those if you want to support. If you want to support in other ways, you can go to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc. But with that said, and until next time, carry on. Oh, I almost forgot. I have one, one last favor to ask of you guys. My wife, Alex, has been working on a project for a while. It's called the Midnight Moonrise, and she is launching or doing her first launch on Monday. So go follow her on Instagram, even if it's not your jam, go check it out. Show your wife or your, your friends or anybody who might be into vintage goods. Just follow or share her page over on Instagram and her website. It's just Midnight Moonrise Everywhere. Uh, it'll be linked down below as well. I would really love it if you guys could help spread the word about Midnight Moonrise and help Alex out. Uh, she's been a huge, huge help and really the main reason I've been able to do all of this stuff. She's been super patient with me for years and uh, I just would like to return the favor by having you guys help me out here and, and spread the word about her new business. So thank you guys. Just click the link in the description down below. Midnight Moonrise, first launch is on Monday. See you guys.